Hi everyone, you are watching Chemistry with Kat. Yesterday we learned the basics of limiting reagents and today we are going to do some more complicated limiting reagent problems. Let's go! Like I said yesterday, the limiting reagent is the molecule that is going to run out first. And once that runs out, the reaction will stop. So the amount of the limiting reagent is what will affect how much product we get. Before we find the theoretical yield, we have to first find the limiting reagent. The question reads 0.615 moles of C2H3Cl and 1.92 moles of O2 are reacted. Find the limiting reagent and the moles of CO2 produced. The balanced equation is 2C2H3Cl plus 5O2 gives us 4CO2 plus 2H2O and 2HCl. Now this is a complicated problem because we're not in a one-to-one -one ratio. So finding the limiting reagent is a little bit more complicated. We can't just use the moles. I'm gonna show you two methods for finding the exact same answer and you can choose which one is easiest. I'll start with the one I like personally and especially if you only have two reactants, I'm gonna recommend you use this one because it's a little bit less work. So I started with writing out the moles that they gave us in the question. Now remember, when it's a one-to-one -one ratio, you can just use the moles and you would know which one is limiting, whichever one has less moles. But in this case, you can't do that because they have stoichiometry coefficients in front. What I do is a cross multiply and divide situation. So I know that two moles of C2H3Cl will react with five moles of O2. So then I use the moles of only one. So I'll use the moles of C2H3Cl. That is 0 0.615 mole. And then for the moles of O2, I'm going to put X and I'm gonna solve for this. And pretty much what I'm looking to see is how many moles of O2 I need to react with 0.615 moles of C2H3Cl. If this X is more than what I have here, then I know that O2 is gonna be the limiting reagent and I'm gonna run out of that. Now, if X is less, then I know I'll have excess oxygen. When I cross multiply and divide this, I get that X equals 1.5375 mole. Now this is less than what I have. So I know that I'm going to have enough oxygen and in fact, I'll actually have excess oxygen. So I know that the limiting reagent is C2H3Cl, this molecule. Now, for part two of the question, they ask us how much CO2 we're going to have, how many moles of CO2. So all we have to do is use the stoichiometry coefficients. So for every two moles of C2H3Cl, I'm going to get four CO2. You can do this two ways. If you know that two and four are a double of each other, you can just double this number or you can do a full cross multiply and divide. So I'll show you that. So we have 2C2H3Cl compared to 4CO2. That will equal, we have 0 0.615 mole and we're looking for the moles of CO2. When I cross multiply and divide that, I get 1.23 moles of CO2. And that is method one. I always recommend this for when you have two reactants because you only have to do this step once and you'll know which one is going to be the limiting reactant. Now you can do this for more than one reactant. You would just have to do this step multiple times to decide which one is actually going to be limiting or run out first. But if you don't like this method, I will show you another one right now. So another way to find the limiting reagent is actually calculate how many moles you're going to get in the products with each one. 
and then whichever one gives you the least moles will be the limiting reagent. This is actually a very good method if they're going to ask you anyway what the moles are. For example, with this question, they're asking you how many moles of carbon dioxide, so we can actually do that step while finding the limiting reagent. So what we're gonna do is start with C2H3. So for two moles of C2H3Cl, we're going to get four moles of CO2. So that equals 0 0.615 mole divided by X, we don't know. When we cross multiply and divide that, we get X to be 1.23 moles of CO2. Now let's try it with oxygen. So we have five moles of O2 is going to give us four moles of CO2. So that's 1.92 mole divided by X. So X equals 1.536 mole. So the oxygen will give us more moles. So we know that the C2H3Cl is our limiting reagent, same as before. And the good thing about this method is it actually gives us the moles of the product we're looking for. So this is very useful to save time on tests. However, you have to do this step for each of the reactants to figure out which one is going to be the least amount. So it still is a lot of work. If you enjoyed this lesson, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Please put any questions you have in the comments below and I will get to them ASAP because I am on here every day. I will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m.